خدا خیر خدا خیر خدا خیر خدا خیر ویمرا 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 نه نه از ازیز مات ویمرا You just watched some of the destruction caused by catastrophic flooding taking place all across Pakistan. And currently 33% of the country is experiencing flooding and tens of millions of citizens have been displaced as a result of flooding. We're looking at a humanitarian disaster on a massive scale. And to really put things into perspective, I want to look at some satellite images taken on August 28th that really capture the sheer enormity of the flooding. This is courtesy of Axios. So as you can see here, these are village fields in Rajanpur, and these were taken by Maxar, and you can see the village before flooding, and then after flooding, the entire village is nearly submerged with water coming up to the buildings. Now here's another look at fields in Rajanpur, just completely devastating on an unfathomable scale. Now this was the Indus River before and after flooding, as you can see, massive difference. Now finally, these are fields and homes along the Indus River in Rajhan, and it's been a catastrophe, needless to say. And I just wanna emphasize this is an ongoing disaster, and this is a climate change induced disaster. Now, for more details, we go to Common Dreams, where Julia Conley explains, with hundreds of thousands of people displaced, more than 4 million crops destroyed, and nearly a million homes demolished or severely damaged, Pakistani officials and rights campaigners on Monday called for a major international aid push following flooding throughout the country, fueled by the fossil fuel-driven climate emergency and an unprecedented season of monsoon rains. More than 30 million people are in urgent need of help, the International Rescue Committee said after conducting a rapid need assessment three days after the Pakistani government declared the flooding, which has killed more than 1,000 people, a national emergency. Both the IRC and government officials have explicitly linked the flooding to the climate crisis with IRC country director Shabnam Balak noting, despite producing less than 1% of the world's carbon footprint, the country is suffering the consequences of the world's inaction and stays in the top 10% countries facing the consequences amid a monsoon season, which has so far seen 784 percent and 500 percent more rains than average in Sindh and Balochistan provinces, respectively. The IRC is anticipating a sharp rise in food insecurity as 71 percent of Pakistanis surveyed by the group are already without access to sufficient clean drinking water. So to say that the situation is bad 
is an understatement. Now, here's some facts. These are just preliminary statistics, all subject to change. These are estimates. So take all of them with a grain of salt. By the time that you see the, this video, these will likely have been revised. But here's what we, what we know so far. As the article pointed out, more than 1,000 people have been killed. I believe the current estimate is around 1,400, but again, that's just an approximation. Take that with a grain of salt. Uh, over 30 million people have been displaced. The highest estimate that I've seen is 50 million. Now, we, when you consider that the total population of Pakistan is 226 million as of 2020, we're looking at almost a quarter of their entire population being displaced. Imagine how many people this affected. It's just, it's hard to grasp how bad this is. Um, as I stated earlier, 33% of the entire country has been flooded. 63% of pregnant and lactating women are considered extremely vulnerable. 40% of people don't have access to critical health care, which is something that is a necessity at this time, considering the fact that IRC reports that they're seeing increase in um, skin infections, malaria, and cases of people having diarrhea. So it's it's bad. Now, I want to go to a statement from Pakistani's climate minister because what they say is really important. Pakistani climate minister Sherry Raymond did not mince words Monday as she pointed out the link between the climate crisis and the suffering of the tens of millions of people directly affected by the flooding. Quote, this is very far from a normal monsoon season. It is a climate dystopia at our doorstep, Raymond told agents France Press. We are at the moment at the ground zero of the front line of extreme weather events in an unreal relenting cascade of heat waves, forest fires, flash floods, multiple glacial lake outbursts, flood events, and now the monster monsoon of the decade is wreaking nonstop havoc throughout the country. And she's absolutely correct. Now, the problem is that things like this, extreme weather events, are going to get a lot worse, especially considering a study that was released on Monday, which essentially states that the rise of ocean sea levels is accelerating. The Washington Post explains human-driven climate change has set in motion massive ice losses in Greenland that couldn't be halted even if the world stopped emitting greenhouse gases today, according to a study published Monday. The findings in the journal Nature Climate Change project that it is now inevitable that 3.3% of the Greenland ice sheet will melt, equal to 110 trillion tons of ice, the researchers said, that will trigger nearly a foot of global sea level rise. So what we're seeing in Pakistan, this is just the beginning. It's going to get worse. So when their uh, climate minister says that this is a climate-induced dystopia, they're absolutely correct about that. And as the Common Dreams article stated, they are responsible for 1% of global greenhouse gas emissions. But countries that have benefited from industrialization and emitting the most CO2, like the United States, I think we bear a lot of responsibility for this. So we absolutely should be sending them aid and doing what we can to assist them. Because again, this is a humanitarian crisis on a huge, huge scale. And it's just, I don't know what to say about this. It's... It's not like this is a one-off event where you can say, wow, this is unfortunate, but thankfully this isn't very frequent. Unfortunately, this is going to be a common phenomenon in our climate dystopian future. Now, if you want to take action and help, I'm going to link you to the International Rescue Committee where you can donate. And thank you to Emo Dragon on Twitter for recommending this organization. They're going to need all the help that they can get. So if you can chip in a buck or two, then that will be much appreciated, I'm sure. So that's where we're at, where... Now, in this day and age, you can no longer deny the reality of anthropogenic climate change. It's right here, and it's affecting people in a substantial way. So anyone currently who still is denying the reality of climate change, like Tucker Carlson, who just did that the other day on his program, who said global cooling is the real issue, these people now are enemies of humanity. They don't care about the suffering. And as the Washington Post article citing that Nature Climate Change study pointed out, even if we stopped all greenhouse gas emissions today, we're still going to see the sea level rise. So what we've done is irreparable harm to our planet. The best that we can do now at this state is try to mitigate some of the damage, but we're still not taking this seriously. Thankfully, the Democratic Party just passed the Inflation Reduction Act, which does provide funding to invest in clean, green technology. The problem is that we're still not taking this seriously when we see goals about reducing, you know, greenhouse gas emissions to 
2005 levels, 40% of 2005 levels, whatever that may be. We need to stop emitting greenhouse gas now, like yesterday. But we, we're not doing that. And that's just at this point in time, it's not going to happen. So if we're not going to take action, then we have to assist the countries and the islands uh, that are going to experience this because it's going to be devastating. It is literally going to kill countless people. So if we're not going to do anything, we at least need to take responsibility and assist them and provide them with immediate aid because this cannot stand. We cannot just allow them to suffer and do nothing when they didn't contribute as much as we did to this current crisis. I mean, they barely contributed, comparatively speaking. So we've got to do what we can to help them. And the U.S. government needs to take action right now.